ಜಗದೋಧಾರನ ಆಡಿಸಿದಳೆ ಶೋಧೆ ಜಗದೋಧಾರನ ವಿ ವೆರಿ ವೆರಿ ಹ್ಯಾಪಿ ದಟ್ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಬಾಂಬೆ ಜಶಿಯಾಕ ಅಲೋಂಗ್ ವಿತ್ ಅಸ್ ಶಿ indeed no needs no introduction to uh, begin with uh, but i'll start with a small uh, story uh, so sivaraj anna the founder of uh, the kuku uh, forest school and kuku uh, movement uh, has been an ardent uh, fan and even he called a devotee of uh, jayshekha and jayshekha's voice so he has written a facebook post uh, as an invitation for the conversation so i thought it'd be better if i read read out the post uh, the post is in tamil so i read out the post in tamil uh, and then we will go into the conversation so this is uh, sivarajana writing it's a bit of a longer post i might take a few minutes to read it so please to bear with me malayalathin miga mukkiyamana திரைப்பட இயக்குனர் மற்றும் திரைக்கதாசிரியரான அடூர் கோபாலகிருஷ்ணன் அவர்களிடம் உதவி இயக்குனராக இருந்தவர் தங்கவேல் அண்ணன் எனக்கு முதன் முதலாக அவர் ஒரு நூலகத்தில் அறிமுகமானார் சென்னிமலை மடிய மலையடிவாரத்தில் கீழே அமைந்திருந்த சிறிய நூலகம் அது முதன் முதலில் அவரை பார்க்கையில் அவர் நூலகத்தில் அமர்ந்து கையில் ஒரு நோட்டை வைத்து ஏதோ குறிப்பு எழுதி கொண்டிருந்தார் நான் வேறொரு நண்பரை அங்கு சந்திக்க செல்கையில் எதேச்சியாக அவரை அங்கு கண்டேன் அடுத்தடுத்து வெவ்வேறு தருணங்களில் அந்நூலகத்திற்கு போகும்போது அவர் குறிப்பிட்டு கொண்டிருக்கும் அந்த காட்சி மட்டும் மாறாமல் அப்படியே இருந்தது ஒரு நாள் நானாக சென்று என்னை அவரிடம் அறிமுகப்படுத்திக் கொண்டேன் மெல்ல எங்களுக்குள் பேச்சு வளர்ந்தது இலக்கியத்தில் தீவிரமான வாசிப்பும் இசை குறித்த ஆழ்ந்த நேசிப்பும் உள்ள மனிதர்தான் தங்கவேல் அண்ணா இசையமைப்பாளர்கள் குறித்தும் இசை குறித்தும் மிகவும் தெளிவாக எடுத்துரைக்கிற அறிவு ஞானத்தை அவர் பெற்றிருந்தார் நான் நேர்பழகிய முதல் இசை நேசர் அவர் ஒவ்வொரு இசைக்கலைஞர்கள் பற்றியும் சொல்வதற்கு அவருக்குள் ஒரு கருத்து இருந்தது ஒரு குரல் இசையில் என்னவாக ஒழிக்கிறது என்பதை பற்றிய துல்லிய விவரணைகளை எடுத்துரைக்கும் நபராக அவர் ஆளுமை அடைந்திருந்தார் அவர் ஒருமுறை சொல்லி கேட்டதுண்டு ரஹ்மானுடைய மியூசிக் இளையராஜா மியூசிக் என்ன வித்தியாசம்னா ரஹ்மான் மியூசிக்ல ஏகப்பட்ட இசை கோர்வைகள் கலந்த இசையாக இருக்கும் இளையராஜாவோட இசை ரொம்ப சொற்பமா இசை கோர்வைகள் உள்ளதா இருக்கு எனக்கு மிக நன்றாக ஞாபகம் இருக்கிறது இசை குறித்து அவருக்கும் எனக்குமான ஒரு உரையாடலில் அவர் நிறைய கொலைகளில் தடுப்பதற்கு இளையராஜா இசை மாதிரியான மெல்லிசைகள் காரணமாக இருக்கும் அதிகமான கற்பழிப்பு வன்முறை வண்ணங்கள் வருவதற்கு இப்போதைய நவீன இசை காரணமாக இருக்கும் ஏனென்றால் அவ்வளவு இசை கோர்வைகள் மனதுக்குள் போகும்போது அந்த அழுத்தம் ஒரு வன்முறையமாக மாற வாய்ப்புள்ளது என்று சொன்னார் தங்கவியல் எனனும் நானும் தொடர்ச்சியாக சந்தித்துக் கொள்ளும் தருணங்கள் அழுத்தெடுத்து வாய்த்தது ஒரு நாள் அவர் தங்கியிருந்த அவரது நண்பரின் அறைக்கு சென்றோம் மிகவும் சிறிய அறை ஆனால் அதில் ஏராளமான புத்தகங்கள் இருந்தன அதன் பிறகு அவருடைய வீட்டுக்கு சென்றோம் அங்கும் நிறைய புத்தகங்கள் இருந்தன அப்பவெல்லாம் சென்னையில் பணியெல்லாம் சொந்த ஊரில் அலைந்து திரிகிறவோ அப்பவெல்லாம் ஊருக்கு பக்கத்தில் இருக்கும் ஒரு பனியன் கம்பெனிக்கு வேலைக்கு போய்விடுவது அவருடைய பழக்கமாக இருந்தது எனக்கு முதன் முதலில் புதுமை பித்தனை அறிமுகப்படுத்தியது அவர் தான் புதுமை பித்தன் மீது அவருக்கு அளவு கடந்த காதல் இருந்தது ஒரே புத்தகத்தை இருபது முப்பது முறை தொடர்ந்து வாசிக்கிற ஒரு மனப்பழக்கம் உடையவராக அவர் இருந்திருந்தார் அவரிடமிருந்து பெரும்பான்மையான புத்தகங்களை எல்லாம் ஏதோ ஒரு நூலகத்தில் திருடப்பட்டவையாக இருந்தது ஒவ்வொரு புத்தகத்தின் மீது இருந்த நூலக லட்சினை அதை உறுதி செய்தது ஒவ்வொன்றும் வெவ்வேறு ஊர்களின் ஊலங்குங்கள் புத்தகங்களை படிப்பதோடு மட்டுமில்லாமல் அருகில் ஒரு நோட்டு வைத்து குறிப்பிடுப்பது அவருடைய மாறாத பழக்கம் அப்படி அவர் வழக்கமாக குறிப்பிடுக்கையில் அவர் பக்கத்தில் சின்ன ஒரு பிபிஎல் வாக்மேன் ஒன்றை அருகில் வைத்திருப்பார் அதில் ஒரு பெண் குரல் கீதம் கேட்டுக்கொண்டே இருக்கும் அது பாம்பே ஜெயஸ்ரீயின் குரல் முதன் முதலில் எனக்கு பாம்பே ஜெயஸ்ரீயின் குரல் அறிமுகமானது அங்குதான் எப்பவுமே அந்த குரல் மட்டும்தான் அந்த வாக்மேனில் ஒழித்துக்கொண்டே இருக்கும் வேறு எந்த பாடலையும் அவர் கேட்டு நான் பார்த்ததில்லை மாலை பொழுதின் வேன் இசையே என்ற பாடல் திரும்ப திரும்ப அவர் முன் ஒழித்தபடியே இருக்கும் பாம்பே ஜெயஸ்ரீ அவர்கள் அக்னி ஆல்பத்தில் வெளிவந்த பாடல் என நினைக்கிறேன் ஒரு நாள் அவர் மீ மிதமான போதையில் நான் ஆறாவது படிக்கிறப்ப என்னோட அப்பா எங்க வீட்டு 
மரத்தூன்ல என்னோட ரெண்டு கையும் கட்டி போட்டு சில வார்த்தைகள் அம்மாவை பத்தி சொல்லிட்டு என் கண் முன்னாடியே உத்திரத்துல தூக்கு மாட்டி தொங்கி தற்கொலை செஞ்சுட்டாரு ஆனா அதுக்கு பின்னாடியும் நான் என் அம்மாவோட சேர்ந்து வாழக்கூடிய சூழல் தான் இருந்துச்சு என் கண்ணு முன்னாடி நடந்த அந்த மரணமும் எனக்குள்ள இருந்த வெறுப்பும் என்னையே எதிர்மறையா பயணிக்க விடாம ஏதோ ஒரு வகையில நேர்மறையான திசையில பயணிக்கிறேனா ஒரு நாள்ல நாலஞ்சு காட்சிகள் என்னால புதுசா யோசிக்க முடியுதுன்னா அது எல்லாத்துக்கும் கண்டிப்பா காரணம் இந்த அம்மாவோட குரல் தான் நீ திரும்ப திரும்ப கேளு என்று என்னிடம் சொன்னார் அப்படித்தான் பாம்பே ஜெயஸ்ரீ அவர்களின் குரல் எனக்கு அணுக்கியமானது அப்படியாகத்தான் நான் அவர்களின் மீட்பிசையை கண்டடைந்தேன் காலங்கள் நகர நகர பத்து வருடங்கள் கழித்து ஒரு நாள் அதிகாலை அந்த தகவல் என்னை வந்தடைந்தது தங்கவையில நான் கிணற்றில் விழுந்து தற்கொலை செய்து கொண்டார் என அவருக்கு மிக நன்றாக அவருக்கு மிக நன்றாக நீச்சல் தெரியும் என்பதை நான் நன் நன்கு அறிவேன் நன்றாக நீச்சல் தெரிந்த ஒருவன் தண்ணீரில் மூழ்கி உயிரை விடுகிறான் என்றால் அவன் எவ்வளவு விரும்பி வழியே சென்று தன் மரணத்தை உள்வாங்கி இருப்பான் என நினைக்கும் போது எனக்குள் அழுகே வந்து விடுகிறது சிறு வயதில் கண்முன்னே நிகழ்ந்த தன் தந்தையின் தற்கொலையின் காட்சி நினைவு தானும் சாகும் வரை மண்டையை விட்டு அகலாத தங்கவேலனுக்கு இடைக்கால மருந்தாக எது அவரது உயிரை அத்தனை காலம் தள்ளி போட்டிருக்கும் என யோசித்தால் அவை இரண்டே இரண்டுதான் ஒன்று இலக்கியம் மற்றொன்று பாம்பே ஜெயஸ்ரீன் இசைக்குரல் அதன் பிறகு நான் சென்னைக்கு வந்து வெவ்வேறு சூழல்களில் அலைந்து திரிந்த போது பத்திரிகை சினிமா என்ன எல்லாவற்றையும் தோற்றுவிட்டேன் என்கிற மன நெருக்கடியில் நான் இருந்த போதும் என்னை மெல்ல தோற்றியது பாம்பே ஜெயஸ்ரீ அவர்கள் அதே அக்னி ஆல்பம் தான் வருடங்கள் ஓடி பிரார்த்தனைகளில் நற்பயனாக குக்கு காட்டுப்பள்ளி எனும் கனவு நிறைவேற தொடங்கியது அதன் பின் கட்டிடக்கலை பயிலும் பியேஷ் என்னும் தோழிக்கும் கற்களை அடுக்கி அடுக்கி கரையோரங்களில் சிற்பங்கள் செய்து அவைகளை அப்படியே விட்டுவிட்டு பயணிக்கிற ஒரு சிற்ப கலைஞருக்கும் குக்கு காட்டுப்பள்ளியில் மனப்பகுதிக்குள் திருமணம் நிகழ்ந்தது பியேஷ் தற்போது ஆப்பிரிக்காவில் பழங்குடி மக்களின் வீடுகளில் ஆய்வு செய்கிறனாக இருக்கிறார் பியேஷ் முழுக்க முழுக்க பாம்பே ஜெயஸ்ரீ அவர்களின் இசையே மனதுக்குள் கொண்டாடி மகிழ்பவர் எனவே பாம்பே ஜெயஸ்ரீ அவர்களின் இசைக்குரல் காடெங்கும் மெல்லியதாக ஒழிக்க அந்த பொழுதின் சிறு அகல் விளக்கொலியில் அவர்களது திருமணம் நிகழ்ந்தது என் மனதுக்குள் சின்னதாக ஒரு விருப்பம் இருந்தது குக்கு திறப்பு விழாவின் போது பாம்பே ஜெயஸ்ரீ அவர்களும் வர வேண்டும் என்பது ஆனால் அச்சமயத்தில் அகிலா அவர்கள்தான் மின்னஞ்சல் வழியாக அம்மாவிடம் இது குறித்து பேசி வந்தார் அப்போது அம்மாவுக்கென தனியாக திருவண்ணாமலையில் அறை ஒன்று பதிவு செய்யப்பட்டுள்ளது என்று மின்னஞ்சல் அனுப்பிய போது அதற்கு அவர்கள் என்னுடைய குரலை பிரார்த்தனையாக நினைக்கிற அந்த இடமும் ஒரு கோவில்தான் அங்கு வந்து தங்குவதுதான் சரியாக இருக்கும் அந்த இடம் எப்படி இருந்தாலும் நான் தங்கிக் கொள்கிறேன் என்று பதில் அனுப்பியிருந்தார் திருப்பு விழாவிற்கு வருகிற அம்மா ஒப்புக்கொண்ட பிறகும் ஏதோ ஒரு வகையில் தேதி மாற்றம் நிகழ்ந்ததால் அவர்களால் திருப்பு விழாவிற்கு கலந்து கொள்ள முயலவில்லை பாம்பே ஜெயஸ்ரீ சஞ்சய் சுப்பிரமணியன் பவுல் பார்வதி ஆகியோரில் என்றாவர் குரலும் குக்கு மலையடிவாரத்தில் கொஞ்சமாக குழுமி இருக்கும் மக்கள் திரளுக்கு அமர்ந்து பாடுவது எங்களுக்குள் நாங்களே அடிக்கடி நினைத்து பார்த்துக் கொள்வதுண்டு எங்கள் நீண்ட கால இசை விருப்பம் இது அவ்வகையில் நாங்கள் இசைத்துட்டு கைத்தொழும் அந்த தாயின் கீத குரல் தற்பொழுது அருகில் கேட்பதாக நாங்கள் உணர்கிறோம் எங்கள் பயணத்தின் வெவ்வேறு சூழ்நிலைகளில் உள்ளுணர்வாக உடனிருந்து பயணித்து அம்மாவின் குரல்தான் அவருடைய இசை கேட்பது ஒரு அணிச்சை செயலான எங்களுக்குள் நிகழ்கிறது கிராமத்தில் வயதான பாட்டி கட்டுகிற மண்வீடு போலதான் அம்மாவோட குரல் அதுல முழுக்க முழுக்க வாழ்க்கை இருக்கும் என சொல்லும் கட்டிடக்கலை ஆஹ் மிராவையும் தங்களுடைய கர்ப்ப காலத்தில் அம்மாவின் ஜகதோதாரண பாடலை தினந்தோறும் சிசுவை கேட்க செய்த அருண் ரேணுவையும் இணையவெளியில் அம்மாவின் இசைக்குறையில் தொடர்ந்து மலர் செய்கிற பிரபாகரன் சேரவஞ்சியையும் மின்மணி ராஜாராஜா ராஜாராமையும் இரக்கம் வராமல் போனதன் காரணம் அருணிமாவையும் சிக்கனம் மனதில் நினைத்துக் கொள்கிறோம் குக்கு நேரலை உரையாடலில் இன்று ஐந்து மணிக்கு நம்முடன் பாம்பி ஜெயஸ்ரீ கலந்து கொள்கிறார் இருதய உறவுகள் இதில் இணைந்து கொள்க சோ திஸ் வாஸ் சிவராஜன்னாஸ் இன்ட்ரடக்ஷன் டு செஷன் ஆஃப் பாம்பி ஜெயஸ்ரீ அண்ட் ஐ திங்க் தட் கைண்ட் ஆஃப் எக்ஸ்பிளைன்ஸ் இன் டோட்டாலிட்டி ஹவு மச் பாம்பி ஜெயஸ்ரீ அண்ட் ஹர் மியூசிக் uh means to all of us uh from kuku so as an invocation uh we have uh, tamarai here uh, along with us tamarai uh, hails from a very small uh, uh village uh near karur so sivarajana uh, had first met her 
during uh, one of her uh, school meetings where she was uh, singing standing in the on the stage she was singing uh, the song what they sing in uh, uh, in the mayana in the smashan during death so sharadan was very impressed uh, by her voice and then tried to contact her and now tamare is a graduate of a music school uh, in chennai so and tamare is one of the dearest child uh, of kuku for all of us in music and uh, i think uh, we will start with the voice of tamare if uh, we are able to connect to her tamare anna கேக்குதா ஒன்னு <laughs> மகிழ் போல ஒன்று ஒன்று கீழி போல கோயில் போல பாட்டு ஒன்று கேட்டு நின்று மனசு போன இடம் தெரியல அந்த மயக்கம் எனக்கு இன்னும் தெரியல மனசு போன இடம் தெரியல அந்த மயக்கம் எனக்கு இன்னும் தெரியல மகிழ் போல Leave it up to you to take forward the session. 
எல்லாருக்கும் புத்தாண்டு வாழ்த்துக்கள் ஹாப்பி நியூ இயர் ஹாப்பி விஷு ஹாப்பி பைசாக்கி ஐம் கிரேட்ஃபுல் டு குக்கு ஃபாரஸ்ட் ஸ்கூல் ஃபார் திங்கிங் ஆஃப் ஹேவிங் மீ ஆன் திஸ் வெரி ஆஸ்பிஷியஸ் டே அண்ட் டு ஸ்ப்ரெட் ஆஸ்பிஷியஸ்னஸ் அண்ட் பாசிட்டிவிட்டி especially in a time when the world is in pain when mother earth is in pain um and i hope collectively as we pray everything will heal very fast thank you kaushik for reading that uh, very endearing and touching introduction written by shivaraj anna what can i say about tamarai's voice what a beautiful voice she talked about she sang about mail and quill but all the beauty of the mail and quill is embedded in her in her soul and i'm so happy that she started with the musical message in this session so to tell you a little bit about myself um i was born in kolkata in a very humble Tamil family, Tamil family hailing from Palakkad. And then my mo- family moved to Mumbai when I was two years old. And it's in Mumbai that I grew up. I went to school, I went to college and I learned a lot of um, music. I was exposed to various beautiful forms of arts. um be it dance be it theater and bombay is the city that sensitized me to beauty amongst so many other things that the city has offered and shaped me up to be the person i am i have two older brothers uh and it was my mother's dream she says even before i was born that if she be gets a daughter which is what i was that she will make sure that her daughter learns music and pursue music so she did that from the time she conceived me there is a joke in the family that when she was carrying me in the beginning of the ninth month in calcutta now called kolkata she took um a rickshaw in kolkata those days used to have the hand rickshaws manually um people used to transport manually so she went on that rickshaw to hear a concert late in the evening in winter i was born in december so this was in november and all the friends and relatives made fun of her and scolded her that going this way you are going to have the baby at the concert venue i'm saying this to record here how much my mother has done to expose me to music even before i was born so from the time i was born when we lived in calcutta then we lived in bombay she sent me to the greatest of teachers and i want to say that i'm so blessed to have uh, learnt music and the other arts from some of the greatest teachers that have walked this earth all of them gave me music with such love uh, shared with such honesty and such integrity um leaving no leaf but giving all their time all their energy and expecting nothing but hard work and diligence from me so that which started in calcutta and grew in mumbai led me to chennai where i moved in 1989 to learn from one of the greatest legends of carnatic music sri lalguri ji jayaraman who further paved the road for me to learn and train and who i think showed me the uh if may if i may call the vishwarupam of art the vishwarupam of music not only did he show me that of music he created me 
in me a burning desire to perfect every note that he explained to perfect every phrase that he taught me and to see the depths and beauty of every form of music that existed in the world so my pranams to all my gurus my pranams to my mother my parents and my brothers who are the reason for what you see today in front of you that has been my short but very beautiful music journey leading to where i am today as a child i learned carnatic music and then going to the fact that we were in mumbai i learned a bit of hindustani music um, i learned to the beauty of ghazal i see as everybody the teachers the professors my student friends they all would just let me sing all the time i had very little to do with commerce and economics which is what i registered for but all i used to do is to sing and after college is when i moved to chennai to further the art of carnatic music and slowly my teachers and my gurus encouraged me to start performing and that's when i could reach all of you in india and everywhere all around the world and i do think that this script is someone higher up there and he created he does create everyone flowers and i truly think in every breath that i uh, breathe into every note that i sing into i really believe that there is a purpose that he has created me for and that is to share joy and peace and beauty through music in the world i shall now hand it to kaushik so he can mark some of the responses from all of you before which i want to thank each one of you for joining us this evening thank you thank you so much for that introduction uh so who has questions please to start uh, typing your questions in the question and answer session so well, then i can start with the uh, uh, few questions mm, could you uh, uh explain to us what you were uh as as a kid or or as as a young adult before the world uh, knew knew you as bombay jayashri you would have had some childhood uh memories you would have had some fun could you explain some part of it and your learning experiences from that i grew up in chembur which is a very charming suburb in bombay green pretty um little little houses was the chembur i remember growing up in and i went to saint anthony's convent in chembur um which was about 2 minutes walking distance from my home so close by that sometimes during the breaks i would sneak and come back home and then go back to class i remember my school and the teachers being very encouraging of my music and almost every day the day in our school would start with me singing the prayer over the mic in the headmistress room and from that room it used to be beamed be beamed across all the classes so sometimes i used to sing in hindi sometimes in marathi sometimes in english sometimes in tamil and i still remember some of the very pretty songs that i used to sing as a child um i won't say i was a very obedient daughter to my mother i was a reluctant child and i used to put up quite a fight with her because she would insist that i wake up in the morning at 4 day after day and practice till i went to school come back from school have something to eat and again practice no going out to play in the evening and it so happened that my mother was a music teacher in the area so most of my friends used to come to learn music from her 
So she would tell all of my friends not to invite me to play because I had to practice. And so my friends were a bit scared because it was their music teacher demanding that of them. Um, so the day would just start with me practicing and it would end with me practicing. But reluctantly, I remember crying. I remember being very fussy because as a child, I did not realize what a gift this music is and what the gift can turn me into as a human being, as in how it can turn me to be a kind of a harbinger for hope. I wouldn't realize as a child. So childhood in school was pretty much that. And it's only when I went to college when my friends, I was older in college, and they would look to me only because I could sing. It became my identity. It became my self-expression. And it became my confidence. And it became my uniqueness. And only then did I realize that this is what they call me out for. This is what they know me for. And so I started taking interest in the same practice. Again, only to sing better so that friends around me would say, oh good, you sing really well. So it took a long time for me to understand um, the depth and the value of this beautiful art system. That's about my childhood. Could you also uh, tell about you also work uh, with uh, uh, special children, uh, especially uh, with uh, autistic children? Um, could you also share your experiences of starting to work with them, how it happened, and what is you are learning from uh, them being in your journey with them? So it's much later in life, maybe two decades ago, 20 years ago, I was at a concert in Dubai. And soon after the concert, uh, as it normally happens, People come around you to compliment you and say really nice things about how they experience the music. Some people come and reach out to say they had attended a previous concert. There's a lot of polite conversation going on. And there was this young boy, maybe all of 10 or 11, who came straight up to me, looked into my eye and said, you sang it all wrong, you sang it all wrong. He just repeated it and his mother then held him and took the boy away. Um, and I was soaking in all the compliments that were moving around me. And this came like a brazen, sharp-edged razor. Um, and I was quite upset. The following day, we had a small a kind of a get-together. And I, when I walked into the space, I realized and spotted this boy much to my um, disdain. But then I went and asked his mother when there was nobody around, asking her, why did he say that to me last evening? So she said, uh, uh, Madam, you know what? My child only knows to speak the truth. And this, this bothered me further. So I said, but what did he mean when he said I sang everything wrong? So she said, my child has autism. I said, could you repeat that? And she said, yes, my child has autism. And... It is a syndrome that he's born with. It's a disability. And that shook me a lot. I came back to India and when the video recording of the concert was sent to me, the first thing I did was to play. And when I played it, I knew, I realized that the boy was right. I had made mistakes. So this kept uh, creeping into my mind and for days I was very impacted by what Prakash, the 11 year old boy, told me. And I started realizing as days passed by that if there was someone in that auditorium, in that concert who cared for me and who loved me so much, it was he, it was Prakash. Because he had the clarity and the honesty to come up to me and say what he knew. And he knew that because he had spent a lot of time listening to my music. And probably there may have been others who knew I had made mistakes, but some of them may not have wanted to say. 
some of them may have forgotten to say some of them simply did not know that they had to say but prakash was someone like a he was literally holding a torch to me watch your steps as you go by you may have come a long way but remember you have to you have to keep working harder and then one thing led to the other children with autism kept coming into my lives in different ways so many multiple stories like prakash's i have and then i thought to myself that maybe this is a call for me to engage them to share the music that i have acquired uh, with them so we started to share i say we because a few of my students and i started sharing music with children with autism and we continue to do so we have done that for about 12 to 13 years now in groups one on one sessions and it's a beautiful experience uh, sharing the music with them because they're true gentle beautiful souls that we normally don't see or recognize and they have helped to make me a better human a better artist so there's a question from one of your students or disciples so the question is mm -hmm. uh, like you said the disciple involved in constantly practicing or perfecting is something you don't understand all the time especially as a child so how did that change and is it okay to take a step back from the rigor or to question it when you otherwise identify with it so strongly could you repeat that kaushik it's not clear to me what you said all right i'll go over it again so the question basically says that like like you had previously mentioned you said that disciple mm -hmm. involved in constantly practicing or perfecting something you didn't understand right. all the time especially as, as true, a child true. so yes. how did that change and is it okay to take a step back from the rigor of that and to question it when you otherwise identify with it so strongly uh yeah there are many questions in this uh when i sing like if i sing something today there will it will suddenly occur to me like a flash that oh this is what my teacher or my guru was explaining and i would recall a class maybe 30 years back or 35 years back and at that point he may have even told me idu unakku ipo puriyadu nee paada 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 unakku puriyalam which means you may not understand or concur with what i'm saying but as you work consistently over the years it may occur to you the truth of what i'm saying so many a times it has taken me years to understand a small point which is actually in front of my eyes and ears but it just doesn't occur to me likewise it may be okay to step backward and look at your own music or the art that you express with just to see how it seems from an outside point of view again to quote my great teacher he would say look at your music from far like an outsider like the eagle looks at something from far away look at it like that imagine you're a third person so that you can look at it constructively and you can criticize you can appreciate you can be happy you can note down the points as to where you can improve so it's quite fine to step backwards and look at your music but all the while bearing in mind that the process of learning is a continuous one and a dynamic one and one that has to be refreshed often the process of learning has to be refreshed all the time so um uh, so the other question is what is the uh, idea or the uh, starting point uh, for uh, hitam uh, swanubhava and uh, listening to life 
these three are three different things as i understand altogether but uh, i'm putting two three questions yeah. together so okay. yeah so listening to life is a concept given to my to me by my dear friend and writer maithili chandrashekhar um and many many years ago she wrote a poem uh listening to life and she it was a long poem and then i liked that little adage so much that i requested her that i will use this for concepts or productions because music being a musician being an artist being a kalakar is all about listening the more you listen the more you know the more you know the more you can express and the more you know the more you know how much you don't know so it's a constant process of listening to one's inner self constant process of assimilating listening to so many beautiful sounds around you so that is listening to life so anubhava the word swanubhava means that which can be experienced by one self in one's own space swa is one self anubhava is experience is a festival that was designed uh, along with the the great musician tm krishna he and myself we started this festival called swanubhava which was meant for students because we kept thinking that there needs to be a festival which is attended only by students not because uh, a child's mother says come i have to take you because this is classical music you have to listen to it. come watch this dance performance with me so often when the pa- parent drags the child to performance uh, the child may come in reluctantly so we decided that we will have it during the day time when school children can come and participate participate they come from school and they go back to school they come in the school bus with their friends and if they look around in the space in the auditorium there are only students more importantly the performers were all virtuosos that performed in swanubhava and i remember each one of them telling us that when they perform for swanubhava there's an element of themselves that they're able to bring out to light which may not be otherwise and that i think is because everywhere they see its students 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 enjoying students clapping students asking them trivial questions uh, for example when um, the great vikuji came to play one student walked up and said what will you do if your pot the ghatam breaks before the concert how will you play so it was it was a very enduring experience for all of us to see um a festival a movement by students and for students and enjoyed and arranged primarily by students so that is swanubhava hitam is a trust that i founded along with my student support to be able to take and engage with music with children with autism and to engage with music with children in areas where our music doesn't reach normally for example there is a village called manjukodi near kumbakonam about half an hour drive from kumbakonam and for the past 6 years we have been engaging about 300 children over there teaching them music sharing Uh, music with them making them sing learning from them so hitam is all about uh, sharing music with children and with children with autism normally children who don't have access to this art form so the next question is uh, could you uh, explain us about your uh, experiences of walking the red carpet uh, the uh, oscar uh, in 2013 for the title song of like of by kanne kanne yes. oh, yeah your experiences about being in the uh, oscar um uh, so for those of you who have seen the movie the movie is inspired from yan martel's book life of pi the movie is about a little boy pi his name who moves on a ship with his family from pondicherry and as he goes the waters enter the ship and 
only he and tiger richard the tiger are left to escape so sir angley who directed the film and michael dana they invited me to participate in the film by rendering the song um we recorded the song in bombay some parts of it were done in chennai and most of the song was mixed in hollywood in los angeles um the movie was released in november 2012 um and in 2013 was the announcement for the oscars and feb 24th 2013 was the oscar event which i had the good fortune of attending and it was a very humbling event and i was in a state of great happiness and also um great stupor all at the same time because i was surrounded by the talent pool of um the film industry um people whom i have only watched on the screen so there was sir robert redford there was meryl streep and there was adele and there were so many actors musicians music directors the room was full of talent and it was a beautifully arranged ceremony which i attended and it's humbling and even now i can't believe that i could take part in that um in the oscars and more importantly that i could represent uh the voice of our country the music of our country and the beautiful art of our country which is so much more which is so much respected and adored in that part of the world as well uh so the question is about uh, you also sung uh, a tirukural and an anavacharya verse in the uh, audio book of uh, wings of fire yes uh, yes um, yeah it's about that and your experiences about that so kadadi tales is a publication that has brought out very very beautiful books for children to read and audio books that accompany those books and one of the books <clears throat> during the time of our great great uh, president then president dr abdul kalam is called agni siragal and uh, dr kalam is from tamil nadu and in his life he has been inspired by tamil tamil philosophy tamil literature and the beautiful veena um so i had the good opportunity to be invited by karadi tales to participate in this audio book by rendering the tirukural for the audio book so as a question from one of your uh, fans uh, from uh, dubai aparna mm-hmm. shukla so the question is the song uh, I, i don't know if i'm reading it right uh, uyala luguma shri satya sai is yes yeah yes. has a string imprint right. yeah uh, imprint in your career um, it is so uh, inimitable do you think the song made an impact on your career in the world of carnatic music is the question and about the song in itself um aparna is absolutely right and aparna some has says has just said something that is very close to my heart and often my mother and i recall that it's probably this song that kind of changed many things for me I was participating in this very unique festival called Spirit of Unity Unity Festival which used to be arranged uh, those days way back in the early 90s and this particular festival was held at Puttaparthi uh, in the presence of the divine Sri Satya Sai Baba and this song is dedicated to him the sahitya is dedicated to him it's a composition originally originally rendered by the legendary p sushilama and uh, the organizer shri tv k shastri um, was trying to persuade me to sing this song and uh, for some time the song was new to me and i was wondering if i can do justice to it and all of that but he kind of persuaded and he said no you have to sing and i rendered the song in 
in the presence of his uh, of the Baba uh, to a very large audience in Puttaparthi. And this is a song that has moved my great guru also several times when I have rendered it in his presence in class or otherwise. And there is something in that song that moves me. I can't explain what exactly it is in words. But Aparna, you're very right in saying that it did, it continues to make an impact on me, the version of the song. And it has been a cathartic experience for me after I rendered the song for the first time at Puttaparthi. So thank you for bringing that up, Aparna. Thank you. So uh, this question is from uh, Mira. Uh, so the question is, what has your experience been uh, teaching music and how do you think singing music or art in general mm -hmm. should be taught as an aspiring teacher or can it be taught in the first place itself? <laughs> Thank you, Mira, for that. Um, Music for me is a process of relearning. The subject, if you call music a subject, whether it's a science or an art or both, is deep, it's wide, it's intense, it has multiple layers, all of them which are beautiful. But Everything doesn't occur to you when you listen to a piece of phrase at the first time. Sometimes it takes days, sometimes it takes years. There have been times when I've learned a composition 20 years back, but it's only now that I feel I see some light in the way I render it. It's only now I see that, oh, this composition, I'm able to understand it only now, but I learned this 30 years ago. So when my Balamani teacher, Amma, who was my first guru, used to talk about this so passionately. I was hearing, I was listening, but it didn't register. So when I teach, I actually don't like to say I teach. I share the music that I have acquired and learned from several of my very benevolent gurus. When I share the music with a student, I relearn. I relive that entire process when I have learned that composition myself no matter how long ago that may have been. And there are certain trivial details that I may recall in the composition only when I engage with another in the process of sharing the music. So teaching music or sharing music is for me primordial because that's the only way I grow. For me, teaching or sharing music is like looking into a mirror because it gives me a very clear picture as to where I am at that point in time. The second question, can music be taught? So like I said, I don't think we have a word in English. So we say teach music, we say teacher, but it's like saying guru and teacher, right? You cannot say teacher and guru is not teacher and teacher is not a guru. Likewise, Music can, one can only inspire another musically to find their own pathway, to find their own journey. But yes, you can help them to hand hold those points that they need to catch on to. And then they have to move on. They have to search in that world. But to be to even be able to search in that beautiful, wide, deep, intense world, you need your guru to drop some secrets in your ears. And that is what is the Guru Sishya Parampara that we as Indians are very, very proud of. So uh, there are a lot of students of uh, architecture here. Uh, so mm -hmm. there's one student of architecture uh, who is from Auroville. So Saundarya, she has typed yeah. the question and, and uh, I think it's better she asks it because it's slightly complex. So I think it's better she sure. asks the question. Saundarya, you're wrong. You can ask. Saundarya? Saundarya, do you hear me? Saundarya, your mic is on. We can hear you. I can ask you a question.
Okay, so we will wait for Sandhya's question. Sandhya, your mic is muted. You need to unmute your mic and ask. Okay, we will wait for Sandhya to get back. So, sure, sure. Uh, so there has been other questions where people have been pressing me to ask this question, I, but I've told them I'll keep this to the end, but uh, they kind of want me to ask this right now. So mm -hmm. uh, the question is, how do you have this air of down to earth and humbleness uh, in you that, you know, kind of all the age groups kind of cling to it and, and adhere to it? How does it come from? Where does it come from? Because we believe it's it's definitely not because of music, because there are a lot of other musicians, there are a lot of other artists who who definitely do not have this uh, that this humbleness that you have, uh, despite of achieving so much. So where does this come from? Is the question. Um, uh, thank you. I'm really grateful that you're being so kind. Um, as I told you, I'm cognizant of this truth that um, I could have been born in any household. I could have had any kind of life. I may have had to search for a guru all my life. I may have been born to parents who were not so passionate about music or who were not musicians themselves. Um, I could have had brothers who didn't care what I did. But none of what I said is true in my case. I'm so blessed to be born in that house, in this household, uh, to have the love and support of my family, my, my older brothers, their families, my mother. And when, when the time came for me to see light in going ahead in music, one of the greatest gurus happened in my life, the legendary Lal Budhisar. And prior to that, Balamani Amma, K. Mahaviji, Ajay Pohankarji, each of them, um, even in my mind or in my heart, if I recall a line, a phrase that they sang in class, even today I'm moved to tears because I cannot recreate it how much ever I try. That was the honesty and uh, the chastity, the purity and the power of the music. So I'm so fortunate to have only seen Vishwaroopams around me in the form of a mother, my brothers, all epitome of love in the form of teachers and my students who yet humble me by their sincerity, their dedication and their extraordinary love for me, of what I do, of what I want to do. So every day I'm only filled with gratitude when I wake up in the morning and when I go back to sleep. The only word I feel and know is gratitude. And I'm a small speck swimming in this ocean of notes and music. So I realize I'm just a speck. And look at all of you, how much you have loved what I do, how much you have wanted to listen to me. So what else can it make me? If you believe that uh, I am what you say, it's because of all this and nothing else. Extraordinary love, extraordinary support and extraordinary persons and people and legends who have set examples before me in their life to make me feel that I'm really nothing. I'm blessed. Thank you so much for that humble answer once again. Uh, so this question uh, uh, in Tamil, so I'll read it in Tamil. If you're not able to follow, sure, I can sure. translate that in English. So uh, this is from Sivagurunadan of uh, Nurpa Handlooms, a friend of Kuku. Mm -hmm. So the question ஒரு பாடலை பாடும் பொழுது அல்லது பாடல் ஆரம்பித்த பிறகு உங்களுடைய மனது எந்த நிலையில் இருக்கும் தவறாக இருந்தால் மன்னிக்கவும் கேட்கும் எங்களுக்கு எங்களது மனதை மறந்து மனது லயித்து கரைந்து போகிறோம் எல்லாம் மறந்து உங்களது குரல் எங்களை ஆட்கொண்டு விடுகிறது கோவிலில் கடவுளை தரிசிப்பது போல அப்படி ஒரு நிலையில் உங்களது மனதில் என்ன குடிக்கொண்டிருக்கும் 
அல்லது உங்கள் மனது எங்கு இருக்கும் மிக அழகான ஒரு கேள்வி இது தவறானது இல்லவே இல்லை என் மனதில் ஒரு அது எப்படி சொல்றதுன்னு தெரியல என் மனதில் ஒரு கோவில் இருக்கு அந்த கோவிலுக்குள்ள இசை மட்டுமே தான் இருக்கு அந்த கோவிலுக்குள்ள நான் புகுந்த அப்புறம் தான் என் குரலே எழும்பறது அப்படின்னு நான் நினைக்கிறேன் அதுக்கு காரணங்கள் நான் பாடுறதுக்கு ஒரு ரெண்டு மூணு நொடி முன்னாடி அந்த அந்த கோவிலுக்குள்ள புகுந்து போறதுக்கு ஒரு முயற்சி எப்பவுமே நான் ஆசையறது உண்டு என்ன அது ஒரு கோவில் மட்டும் இல்ல எனக்கு ஒளிஞ்சுக்கிறதுக்கு ஒரு மிக அழகான ஒரு இடம் நாங்க போய் ஒளிஞ்சுண்டு எனக்கு என்ன வேணுமோ பண்ண முடியும் அப்படிதான் நான் எப்பவுமே நினைக்கிறது அதனால அந்த கோவிலுக்குள்ள அந்த இடத்துக்குள்ள நான் போய் ஒளிஞ்சிட்டேன்னா அந்த இடம் அப்படியே விசாலமா ஆயிடுறது எனக்கு என் மனதுல என்ன இருக்கு யார் யாவது பார்க்க முடியுதா என் கண்ணு திறந்தாலும் சில போது எனக்கு யாருமே பார்க்க முடியாத நிலையில தான் நான் இருப்பேன் சில பேர் வந்து நடந்து போவாங்க வருவாங்க பாதி பாட்டுல எழுந்து போவாங்க ஆனா அதெல்லாம் வந்து எனக்கு ஒண்ணுமே உணராத ஒரு நிலையில இந்த இசைதான் என்னை கூட்டிட்டு போறது அந்த இடம் அந்த நான் குடியிருக்கிற அந்த கோவில் அந்த இசை கோவிலுக்குள்ளதான் நீங்களும் இருக்கீங்க அப்படின்னு நான் நினைக்கிறேன் நீங்க ஏற்கனவே இருக்கீங்க ஆனா நான் பாடும் போது உங்களுக்கு அந்த கோவிலோடையும் அந்த இடத்தோடையும் ஒரு தொடர்பு ரொம்ப அழகா ரொம்ப ஆழமா ஒரு தொடர்ச்சி உங்களுக்கு கிடைக்கிறது அப்படி இருந்தா நான் வந்து இப்போ இப்போ இது வந்து நீங்க கேட்ட அப்புறம் நான் யோஜனை பண்ணினா எனக்கு அப்படி தோன்றுறது அது உண்மைதான் நினைக்கிறேன் The question is, uh, no, as, as, I'm not sure, I think as a performer or as an artist, uh, there have been uh, moments where, where while we are uh, performing, we, we kind of uh, tend to uh, lose the presence of where we are, as you, as you mentioned, and then okay. kind of tears automatically roll down the eyes while uh, we are performing. Yeah. So yeah. the question yeah. is, Uh, do you always uh, experience such moments or do you have any uh, particular uh, uh, composition that always gets tears when you perform sadharanamave paada aramichutten and the tambura once i tune my tanpura and the strings um i know for sure that immediately my eyes are moist just with the sound of the tuned tambura or even the process of tuning is so beautiful and there are moments when i feel extra connected and extra emotional that could be a particular ragam or that could be a particular composition or it could be to a event related to the composition i might remember when i learned it what my guru said how i learned a composition from my father Uh, or how i learned a composition from my mother or from my teacher balamani amma I, i the whole visual image will move in front of my minds i like a whole movie and i can see everybody afresh the students who learned with me my notebook the mistakes that i made everything almost every composition or every ragam that i learned is almost fresh in my mind so i'm actually going into a totally different world a beautiful world full of incidents full of beauty and uh, while some ragas and uh, compositions move me more than the others in general for me music is that something that uh, moves me music is something that i'm able to express myself with music is something i'm able to reach out to all of you with Mm-hmm. So the 
Next question is how do we uh, introduce the idea of music uh, to kids? I think it's a parent who's asking this question that uh, they want to uh, introduce the get the kids try, to yeah. try and learn music, but uh, when they are not, uh, the question also is how do we find a right guru? How does that happen? And what are your suggestions for people who want to start learning music? Uh, it's a beautiful question which I always like to answer. And several times mothers and fathers and grandmothers and sometimes even aunts and uncles or sisters or brothers ask me this question. How do I inculcate music in my child? How do I uh, provide for my child the environment to grow in music? I think the most important thing comes from the word itself, Karnatic. Karna means to hear. So the Karna is part of our music, Karnatic, a very beautiful system, Indian system of classical music. So suppose your child is about even six months, you can start playing music that you enjoy for the child regularly, every day. Maybe you can choose a time, maybe six o'clock in the evening or maybe 10 o'clock in the morning when your child is awake and you're spending child, time with your child, the child is playing, take 20 minutes and half an hour and play music, play music all the time. You can even play music to your child through his or her sleep. Just switch the tape recorder on or your computer on or any device where you have all your music. I believe the child can absorb the music even when the child is asleep. That's possible. I'm sure it's possible. So just keep giving music to your child through his zero to six as much as he or she can take it. And you'll be surprised that when by the time he's six or seven, he would have assimilated a lot of it without engaging directly in learning in a class or from a teacher or from a guru. I think seven or eight is the right age for a child to be able to sit in a class obediently and take instructions from a teacher and sing simple songs. Mm. Now, how do you find that teacher um, is not a question that I can answer very easily, depends on where you stay. Uh, the proximity of the teacher, how friendly the teacher is, how what the approach of the teacher is, how much time you are able to give to your child. You Sometimes it doesn't work if you just five to six pack your child who's seven years old with a bag and a notebook and a pencil say, okay, go to music class and come. No, it may not work. You may have to sit there, engage in that class while your child is learning, come back, make him sing or hum a little. So it's a process you have to be involved in from the beginning. You have to participate. You may even have to learn with the child or learn parallelly, but engage in, oh, let us learn this. We've learned this song. You've learned it too. Okay, can you sing it together? It doesn't matter how he sings it, whether he's so tuneful, whether he is keeping in the rhythm, no. But make it a part of your activity. So a little by little by little, you increase the time you spend on this. Music is like anything else. Again, my guru told me once that in Tamil, he said, What does that mean? You show little effort, little effort, very, very little effort, and she will hug you abundantly. This is what he told me and this is what I tell every parent who's aspiring for their child to learn this beautiful form of music and it is a gift that you will be giving your child because your child will have a friend forever, a friend in music. No, we have all the time, depending upon your time. <laughs> if it's for maximum three hours, if it's okay to prolong a bit longer, we could prolong a bit longer if it's okay with you. 
maybe another 10 minutes because I was given to understand that we are going from 5 yes. to 6 according to your poster. Yes, yes. All right. Okay. Then maybe I'll take a last uh, few questions. So maybe Soundarya is off. Maybe I'll take uh, uh, Soundarya's question. So Soundarya is a student of architecture. So she has shared an experience and then a question. So the experience is one beautiful experience that is so close to my heart was when I heard you sing in the amphitheater of uh, Madhuri Mandar in Auroville. Yes. Uh, I have grown hearing your music and I have grown uh, playing in the gardens of Madhuri Mandar. Uh, so both being close to my heart, both music and architecture almost merged as one. So uh, thank you so much uh, for that. Uh, so the question here is being an architect uh, and a singer of Carnatic music myself, I often tend to relate both uh, and from my perspective, I believe we can draw parallels as music mm -hmm. is almost moving architecture and architecture being frozen music. So mm -hmm. what are your thoughts on this and has any particular space or any building or any architecture moved you as much as a music moves oneself or yourself? That's the question. Um, that is so beautifully um, explained, Saundarya. Your artistic mind explaining the aesthetics of architecture and of music. Yes, I think it's a form of beauty. Architecture is a form of beauty. And um, often when I sing a ragam, a ragam is that which comes before a composition, it's when we extempore. Um, sing Alapane, it is called, it's the introduction to a Kriti. Uh, and when we try to uh, pack our ideas one after the other, uh, drawing from inspiration, which is the back of our head, drawing from parts of the composition, which is rich in the raga, or fra drawing from lessons we have had with our teachers, or from the, the many hours that we have put into to practice. So there are many sources from which we draw and um, uh, they're just juxtaposed. Once I start singing, and that's true of any musician, these sources just contribute and they gush through me to see the light. And at one point, several times, I have felt that, wow, I'm trying to build a structure. I'm trying to build maybe something like a temple. And similarly, there are several compositions which I love um, and some of them are by the Saint Tyagaraja and the way he structures the composition, we call it Sangatis, they are ideas that pack and they, they mount and make the whole structure almost like the Chidambaram temple. So the Chidambaram temple, the Brihadeshwara temple, and the Madhura Meenakshi temple, which I have the blessing of visiting very often whenever I go to the concert, are three structures that are etched in my mind. And quite a number of times when I'm singing a composition or a ragam or a swara, I have this image of maybe entering the temple or just a flash of the gopuram or the flash of the structure. So yes, I think architecture and music the artistry, the aesthetics of both worlds all come from one beautiful source. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, I think we'll, near the end of the session, maybe we will, as all of us will be delighted to uh, listen to you and to hear you sing. I think if we can take a request sure. of uh, Pai Molini has been the favorite song of everyone from Kuku and uh, especially Sarajana. So I have heard Sarajana listening to the song for six hours or seven hours continuously in a loop when I was with him. So if you could sing a few lines of that and we could end the session today. Uh, with uh, prayerful thoughts to the entire universe that is in pain today and praying for the safety and well-being of everybody on the planet. May we see auspicious times, beautiful times, and may we realize from 
our mistakes, uh, how much we have pained Mother Nature that she has to resort to this to teach us to be better. How much she has offered us, let's remember that with gratitude. And I shall render Mahakavi Bharatiya's beautiful composition. lots of love and prayerful wishes. Thank you so much for this wonderful invitation. Thank you so much. And I'm sure about 150 participants here are definitely screaming on the other end of the scream in joy and you're not able to hear them. And I am not able to believe myself that it's actually happening. And how you know talking to for an hour to me it's still looks like a dream and I'm still not able to get myself to believe it's actually happening and thank you so much for, for being with us. And My pleasure. I wish you all a very, very happy new year once again. Thank you so much. Thank you all for joining and we really, really pray that your voice will be echoed in the, in the doom of the Cuckoo School uh, very, very soon in the near future. That's the prayer from all of us from Cuckoo for your voice to be there in Cuckoo. Thank you all for joining. Thank you once again, Jayshweka, for taking time for us and, and being there. And, and I'm sure this is such a mesmerizing experience. And I'm definitely running short of words to express how all of us uh, feel right now. So thank you so much for this uh, experience that you have given us. Thank you all for joining. Thank you. So we have uh, other session tomorrow morning and we hope that all of you will also join for the Cloud All of Us session tomorrow morning, 9 a.m. Thank you.
தூய சுடர்வானொளியே சூரயமுதே கண்ணமா 